Since the coup that overthrew interim president Paul Henry Sandago Damiba on September 30, 2022, Burkina Faso has been led by military commander Ibrahim Traoré, a native of Burkina Faso. Traoré, at 34, is Africa's youngest president in office at the moment. Traoré has maintained his formal, enigmatic manner of conduct as president, for which he was previously well known. He has made a concerted effort to project an image of a dignified war leader while tightly controlling his communication in an attempt to avert the unfavorable public opinion that followed his predecessors. Pro-government propaganda has increased in Burkina Faso's traditional and social media outlets throughout his rule. It is wise to say he is a revolutionary, just like Thomas Sankara. In the most recent turn of events, Traoré has suspended the issuance of export permits for artisanal and semi-mechanized gold and other precious commodities with immediate effect. Artisanal miners are individual miners or small groups who use traditional methods and tools to extract gold, often with limited technology and mechanization. They typically sell their gold directly to local traders or middlemen. Semi-mechanized miners employ some level of mechanization for extraction and processing, often using small machinery and equipment. They may have more formal structures and sell their gold to larger traders or export companies. A statement that was released by the military leaders on February 20 said the suspension followed the need to clean up the sector and reflects the government's desire to better organize the marketing of gold and other precious substances. It further stated that mining groups with material to export are encouraged to get in touch with the National Society for Precious Commodities for payment. As of 2020, gold accounted for 37% of Burkina Faso's total exports, and mining is a major employer. However, in recent years, political unrest and a widespread Islamist insurgency have hampered exploration and reduced gold extraction leading to the closure of certain mines and a reduction in production at others. Two military coups were also instigated in 2022 due to frustration with the increasing insecurity. It is not clear what effect the new export ban would have. Artisanal production amounts to almost half of industrially produced gold in West Africa's Sahel region, which includes Burkina Faso. Around 10 to 30 tons of gold is mined in Burkina Faso, with an estimated 1 million people involved in the sector. Bear in mind that in December, Captain Ibrahim Traoré revoked the mining permits of all foreign businesses in Burkina Faso, including those from Russia. It seems he became aware of the covert activities global companies were conducting in Burkina Faso. How did he cancel the licenses, and what is his strategy for the thousands of tons of gold that would still be in Burkina Faso? Directly affected industry titans like B2 Gold, Nor Gold, Endeavor Mining, Semafo, Fortuna Silver Mines, and Hummingbird Resources were appending Western businesses used to plunder the continent's riches. Captain Ibrahim could not understand why Burkina Faso, despite having significant gold reserves, remained one of the world's poorest nations. He knew that Burkina Faso's former colonial power, France, had enforced unfair trade agreements on the nation both before and after its independence, ensuring that France benefited disproportionately from Burkina Faso's gold resources. This has prevented Burkina Faso from developing an independent gold industry. While serving in the military, Captain Ibrahim Traoré saw that Burkina Faso's gold exports were subject to unfair price arrangements and that French companies were given first dibs on mining licenses. France failed to provide sufficient support to Burkina Faso's domestic gold mining industry, favoring foreign technology and experience instead, which impeded the transfer of knowledge and skills to Burkina Faso individuals. Due to increased reliance on foreign players, the nation found it more difficult to establish itself as a leader in the gold mining industry. Captain Ibrahim Traoré made it his goal to rescue Burkina Faso from this snare after seeing the wicked nature of France's Sahelian policies. But he knew that in the past Burkina Faso's government had been unduly influenced by France politically to ensure that policies benefited French businesses in the mining sector. This included pushing back against laws, supporting regional authority over gold reserves, and putting pressure on the government to offer advantageous conditions to French businesses. Ibrahim Traoré 
decided to first consolidate all of his powers to escape Burkina Faso's systemic trap, where the CFA franc, a shared currency used by multiple West African countries, looted the nation's gold sector. Because of the CFA franc's fixed exchange rate to the euro, Burkina Faso's exports are perceived as artificially overpriced, which is lowering its competitiveness internationally. This is one of the main reasons why Ibrahim Traoré recently announced that his country might soon abandon the CFA franc as part of an effort to break all ties that kept them in slavery. Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger have demonstrated time and again that they prioritize autonomy over expediency, having already driven out French soldiers and retreated from a UN mission in Mali. Their stance on the euro paid CFA franc seems to remain unchanged, even though analysts and experts believe that abandoning the CFA would be riskier and more difficult than leaving Nikawa's, a decision that would be viewed as a daring, if possibly foolish, show of defiance. However, France was able to artificially strengthen the CFA franc and then devalue it after purchasing a significant amount of gold from Burkina Faso, forcing France to pay less in CFA franc than the original price for the gold. This made it evident that France's involvement in Burkina Faso's gold mining industry was primarily motivated by its desire to exploit the country's resources for its benefit, with little consideration for Burkina Faso's development. This move of the immediate suspension of export permits for artisanal and semi-mechanized gold and other precious commodities by Traoré has sparked various discussions and potential impacts. Approximately 1 million people who are directly or indirectly involved in artisanal gold mining, a vital source of income for many in Burkina Faso, may have major effects from this decision. The suspension could lead to decreased gold production and exports, impacting the national economy and government revenue. Come to think of it, the ban might push some miners toward the black market, potentially undermining the government's goals of transparency and regulation. Discontent among affected communities will definitely lead to social unrest and instability, adding to the existing challenges in Burkina Faso. Take note that the government hasn't announced the duration of the suspension, creating uncertainty for miners and businesses, but Traoré certainly has a plan. It could be possible that Western corporations have started using these small-scale gold traders to extract gold from Burkina Faso. Due to the huge profits that Western firms have made on Africa's resources, many of the continent's nations are stuck in cycles of dependency and poverty. Traoré's initiatives are part of a growing trend among African leaders who are demanding a more equitable sharing of their riches that goes beyond the immediate financial benefits and challenging the notion that their continent is merely a source of cheap resources. By making this decision, Traoré challenges the Western narrative that sees African nations as cheap suppliers of resources and claims his right to self-determination. Traoré is waging a struggle for sovereignty. His bold action might inspire other African countries to adopt the same attitude and take control of their fate. Under the resolute leadership of Captain Ibrahim Traoré, Burkina Faso is rewriting the history books by taking on the challenge of regaining control over its vast gold reserves and challenging the historical dominance of foreign corporations. The opening of a new gold refinery heralds the start of an exciting new age in which the country seeks to attract investors dedicated to sustainable and ethical development and achieve the full potential of its mineral richness. Before, Burkina Faso had to agree to allow the export of unprocessed gold. As a result, Burkina Faso missed the opportunity to increase its revenue. Now that Burkina Faso is establishing its gold refinery, its officials will be on-site to evaluate Burkina Faso's fair amount that should be supplied. Previously, exporting raw gold entailed accepting lower rates and removing themselves from the refining process. Now is the time for change. Take note that Traoré has also been doing all that he promised to do in the speech he delivered during the Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg. He said Burkina Faso had been confronted with the most violent form of imperialist neo-colonialism for the past years and slavery had continued to impose itself on them, but he did not want anyone to feel sorry for his country. This was because he had decided to fight against all the crises in his country to relaunch their development. 
Here he is, coming up with strategies every time to better his country. African countries need to work together to achieve their development goals. This means that they need to cooperate on issues such as trade, security, and migration. They also need to speak with one voice on international issues. Russia has also provided military and financial assistance to Africa and has not interfered in Africa's internal affairs. This makes Russia a reliable partner for Africa. The young people in Africa are not left out. They should rise and fight neocolonialism. A complicated discussion has been sparked by Burkina Faso's suspension of small-scale gold export permits. The government's stated objectives of structuring the industry and combating criminal activity are commendable, but there are worries about the possible effects on social stability, the national economy, and the livelihoods of miners. To foster confidence and reduce disturbance, it is essential to specify the objectives, timeline, and specifics of compensation for the impacted miners. For long-term solutions that go beyond simple regulation, it is imperative to address problems like poverty, a lack of alternatives, and poor governance. The circumstances in Burkina Faso are a sobering reminder of the complex issues related to small-scale gold mining in Africa. Although there are no simple solutions, negotiating this difficult terrain requires a nuanced strategy that puts transparency, sustainability, and the welfare of impacted people first. The only way Burkina Faso and other African countries experiencing comparable difficulties can find a way towards a more sustainable and equitable gold business is by carefully weighing the different viewpoints and their effects. Do you think Ibrahim Traoré has made the right decision by suspending export permits for small-scale gold production in Burkina Faso? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Do not forget to like this video and subscribe to the new tourist channel. Turn on notifications too so you get notified whenever we upload videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.